everybody doing today? So in the next episode of the 570 series, uh, took it out last night. She was running great. I was towing the kids around in the trailer with the hayride for Halloween and she developed a little ticking noise in the upper end. Um, and I suspect we've got a broken valve spring. So we're going to be taking the top end apart and seeing what we got. Seeing uh, if it's a spring or something else, but everything else has been replaced except for the springs. So I'm suspecting it's got a bad valve spring. So let's get into it. Um, pretty much, pretty easy. Take off the air box, throttle body, and uh, you can start tearing into it. Okay, so I've got the bed in the service mode, which you just undo your pin here. And then we're gonna get all this stuff off. So you just pretty much get all your intake stuff out. This off. I'm really hoping this is it because rebuilding an engine <laughs> and it starts making noise is a little concerning. But one of the things is is when you get when you get your air box out, you get your bed pushes against the muffler. So if you just tilt the bed forward, that gives you enough room to wiggle the air box out. Oh. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt, but yeah. you'll get it. It's like I'll get it. Hang on. You know, nothing can be easy. Everything's got to be difficult. All right, here's our air box. All right. Now our throttle body. Now, you don't have to take it out. You can just set it over here out of the way. Um, you're going to want to undo your MAP sensor or your BAP as Polaris calls it. Barometric atmospheric pressure. I don't know. I call them MAP sensors. Manifold absolute pressure or air pressure because I'm from the automotive field so it's a MAP sensor to me. Uh, and then get your fuel injector plug here off. Okay spark plug wire, fuel line, just push in and release your little tab here. There we go. Nope, oh, we're good. Usually they don't have a ton of pressure in them. All right, so there you go. That's basically everything to gain access. So the next step, I'm gonna get the coolant drained out and um so i'm going to do that off camera get the coolant drained out and then we'll get to the next step getting the cylinder head off okay so we got the coolant drained out of the engine another thing i do is i clamp off my upper and lower hoses to try and keep as much fluid you know up in the radiator um, so once you get the block drained out now you'll be able to start working on the top so one of the first things i do because these are the hardest things. Pull your exhaust springs off for the front here. All right, there we go. Now I don't have to deal with those later. I hate these things. God, these things are horrible sometimes. Got our springs off. All right. Now using your T40, pull your valve cover off. One, two, and three. All right, get your valve cover off. Set that over there. All right, and there we go. So now, pretty much put it at top dead center, which I do have a video on uh, how to do all that. But one of the things I do is I'm going to come over here and loosen up the belt cover so you can gain access to your clutch, okay? And by doing that, you can rotate it around to top dead center. So I'm going to do that. So I'll just reach in here. And we're going to bring it around to top dead center. And... 
just about there. All right. All right, looks good. Now you want to double check. Make sure your flywheel marks on, which is just pull your crank sensor out. Make sure you're on that right mark. We'll pull our crank sensor out. And we're gonna find the V. Where it went. Hang on, we're not there yet. Might be on the wrong stroke here. Actually, I'm trying to find that V. There it is. Yeah, we're good. We are good. Okay. So we're gonna take our cam retainer off, which is an eight millimeter. Take our timing chain guide off first. All right, looks good. And remove our timing chain to take the pressure off. Now, I do have video on doing the timing chain. I do have the upgraded hot cams tensioner in here. So it's two 10 millimeter bolts to pull the tensioner housing off. And you just slowly back it off. If you have the stock Polaris one, it's the, I think it's a 24 millimeter. Takes the whole thing right off. But, and there we go. And there's our tensioner out. So. Okay, tensioner's out. Perfect. Looks good. Okay. Ow, hit an itch. Okay, so now we can take our camshaft retainer off. camshaft retainer and well, the cams are looking good it appears to be in good shape and now we can pull our camshafts out there's our intake cam Lots of oil up here. We're getting good oil in. And there's our exhaust cam. Well, one of the things I do, you take a screwdriver just to hold your timing chain up like that. Keeps it from falling down in the engine block. Okay. So everything up here is looking pretty good. So now we can take our four cylinder head bolts off, which are a 14 millimeter. So just using a socket. They're on there. They're in there, that's for sure. There we go. Last one. All right, perfect. So once you got them loose with your ratchet, then you can use your impact driver to pull them the rest of the way out. That's like that. All right. And then on the side of the cylinder head, you're gonna have these two eights over here. these two guys over here now everything's undone and you can pull your cylinder head off now, that's the fun part because you got the exhaust here there we go we're gonna undo that get our gasket out of there okay and then let's just pretty much pull up 
and off it comes. Now, you take your time and chain, and uh, <laughs> that's the fun part. But what I tend to do is pull the cylinder head up just a little bit so you can see the chain in here, and then just stick a screwdriver in there so when the chain falls down, it rests on the screwdriver and doesn't fall all the way down into the block. And let's get these bolts out. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Make sure your washers are on there. Washers on these bolts. There we go. Now you can leave these in the cylinder head when taking it off if you have the head pipe off. If the head pipe's still on, you got to take these guys off. And that one's still. Come on. Sometimes they get stuck in the head gasket. Okay. And then just rotate and out it comes. And the one thing I forgot to unplug is the coolant temp sensor. There we go. There we go. There's our cylinder head. So let's uh, get this in the bed and see what's going on. With All right. So the cylinder head is out. And I've inspected it. Everything looks okay. Valves, everything's looking pretty good. I can't see if I've got a broken spring. However, this one's really tight. This one feels like it's sticking. That one feels tight but sticking. And this one... Hear that? Right there. See? Tight. These are tight. No. This one. There's our noise. So I don't suspect that it's a broken valve spring, but I believe it's a weak valve spring that's in there. And there we have it. It's all back together. There's my reconditioned cylinder head, my new jug. New case halves from when the motor blew up from the previous owner and went through the side of the block. But that was the issue. I had a weak valve spring in that cylinder head. And I had I did replace them, but it was weak. So we got it all back together. Pretty much the assembly is the reversal. And uh, it's not that hard. I'll put in here, there is a difference on your head bolts, whether you have the black head bolts or the silver head bolts. Here's the torque specs and procedure for the black head bolts. And here's the procedure and the torque specs for the silver head bolts. And that, it's a pretty easy job to do. So let's see how this bad boy's running. ticking uh, feels like it's got a little more power again so it was definitely that weak bail spring uh, that was causing the ticking noise now I know I didn't um, give you a, how to put it back together um, but it's pretty straightforward everything goes back on just the way you take it off and I do have a video about setting the timing so I'll put a link in for that video that will help you how to set the timing on it and um, pretty much straightforward so we got the ranger done it's back up running good and until the next time if you like this video give me a thumbs up and subscribe share do whatever you can because we just hit 300 
uh, subscribers. I know it's not a lot, but just for starting this channel, I've already hit 300 and I want to hit that thousand mark. So um, the more and more you guys like and subscribe, the more videos I'm going to put out. I'm going to try and put out as much as I can. So until the next one, I'll catch you all around.